Hi there, I'm Dr. Chris, and in this video I'm going to be talking about structural hydrocarbon traps. Structural traps occur as a result of post-depositional modification of the reservoir rock. There are three main types of structural traps I'm going to talk about. I'm going to talk about full traps which are due to compression within the earth. I'm going to talk about full traps which are due to compaction of sediments over uneven topography. And finally, I'm going to talk about fault traps which are dependent on faulted rock creating a good seal to stop migration of hydrocarbons. There is of course a combination of all three, but let's keep it simple. Here we go. Before we start, as a reminder, there are five features required for hydrocarbons to be found. You should be able to identify what they are. We are going to start off by taking a basic look at a continental margin. Here we have an oceanic crust subducting the continental crust creating a back arc where compression has caused a net shortening of the Earth's crust where thrust faulting and fold belts produce structural hydrocarbon traps. We are going to have a quick look at compressional fold traps. In a fold belt, compressional forces cause the folding of the layering within the Earth. With an impermeable cap rock, hydrocarbons can accumulate. However, folding of lithified rock can have a positive or negative effect by either increasing porosity due to fracturing the reservoir or breaking a part of the cap rock allowing hydrocarbons to escape. Now, so far I've been using 2D illustrations to talk about hydrocarbon traps. In a perfect situation, our 2D slice cuts through the peak or peaks of the traps making interpretation easy. The real world is of course 3D, where 2D slices through anticlines can occur in various orientations. I will stick with the most advantageous crosscuts, for now. We are now going to look at compactional fold traps. For this example of compaction, we start off by looking at flat layers which are faulted into horse and grabbins. Sediments fill the grabbins over time by draping deposits over the uneven topography. Due to the weight of the sediments, differential compaction creates anticline traps over the horst. The porosity within these types of reservoirs is closer to primary porosity as the rock has not been as modified by compressional forces. Similarly, compaction can occur when a reef is buried under sediments. This can produce both a structural trap within the anticline draped over the reef and a stratigraphical trap within the reef itself. Finally, we are going to look at various fault traps. Typically in an area that has already undergone compression, normal faults will cut through reservoir, cap, and source rock alike. Some faults will seal if a reservoir is faulted to a cap rock, and some faults will seal if the fault itself is sealed. However, if the faults are not sealed, hydrocarbons can escape. Rocks that are more plastic will seal better than brittle rocks. In an area where thrust faults occur, hydrocarbon accumulation is once again dependent on fault sealing and anticlinal traps remaining intact and sealed. A final type of fault trap we are going to look at is a growth fault, which occurs at the same time as deposition. The increase in sedimentation, say in a deltaic environment, triggers a growth fault. The growth fault throw increases with the addition of sediments. A thickening of the stratigraphic section occurs at this time. Rollover anticlines are created as the sediments slump. Faulting can trap hydrocarbons if the fault is sealed, but the rollover anticlines make very good traps. Some of you may have thought, what about salt domes or diapers? These situations can result in all sorts of interesting combinations of structural traps, including faults, compression, compactions. However, this can wait for another video. Again, 2D lines through a 3D earth are not always going to be the best for interpretation, especially when you add in the complexity of faulting. To recap, structural hydrocarbon traps occur as a result of post-depositional modification of the reservoir rock. Compression within the earth will fold layers of rock into anticlines for fold traps. Compaction of sediments over top of uneven topography, again, causes anticlines for fold traps. And finally, faulting of the rock will produce traps as long as reservoir rock is sealed by an impermeable rock and the fault layer itself is sealed. I've provided a link to my notes down below if you'd like to use them. 
you like my video, please give me a big thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, and even better, share my videos through your networks. Till next time, I'm Dr. Chris, and keep rocking.